Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real. We are now in the year 1961 and well, we already beat Yuri Gagarin in 1958 but now we hope to go one step further. We hope to perform our first ever EVA extravehicular activity this year as well as landing on another planet for the first time. But before we get on with any of that EVA or interplanetary nonsense, we have Artemis LLP launched on the 2nd of January 1961, the second attempt that we are going to do as a space agency to land a probe on the moon. We already succeeded once last year, but that contract can be completed five times, so you can bet we are going to try and complete it five times, because quite frankly, well, we get almost 500,000 funds every time we complete this contract, and every biome that you land in the moon at the moment with the scientific experimentation that I have got earns me about 160 science, which is, well, quite frankly, a lot of science to be getting for a mission that we have designed and we know is capable of doing that. So, yes, expect a lot of these launches in the coming well, couple of episodes, because it is, it's just a great way of earning more funds and more science. But in order to earn more science, we are going to need to touch down in a different biome. The first lunar lander, I believe, landed in the lowlands, so of course we're going to have to go somewhere that isn't the lowlands. A bit tricky, but considering that most of the moon is lowlands. However, this one I have in, in my sights the Mare Orientale, so the sea, the Oriental Sea, I guess you could say. I believe the lunar mares were named because, well, when they were first talked about or named, it was, they, they actually believed because they were darker, they weren't as reflective, they thought they were actual seas on the moon. Now, one good thing about the launch of Artemis LLP3 is we actually got to use that hydrolock stage to capture, which meant we had a lot, lot more breathing room when it came to finally bringing this thing down on the surface. So with another successful lunar landing, we obviously gained a lot more science from that. And one good thing about RP1 and Kerbal construction time is once you earn 20 science, obviously you earn more upgrade points. So I'm going to go use that science and I'm going to make my Kerbal Space Center, well, Cape Canaveral better, I guess you could say. And of course, we're going to go in and we're going to unlock some actual science as well. Now, what I am doing with the science at the moment is I am researching up to science nodes that are 50 and below because I'm still going along the lines of I have not updated my research and development. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to dump funds in order to actually do that. But here we have the second launch of 1961. Once again, it's the Artemis LLP. This time it's the fourth one on the 14th of February 1961. Valentine's Day, would you believe? Now, once again, it's exactly the same as the last launch. The only difference is we're going to try and go for a different landing zone. And once again, this thing was completely successful. I've never ever had that X405 engine fail on me. And it's quite, well... Unusual, I guess. It's not unusual. I think I've still got an ignition failure chance of around 5% on that thing. And it is the upper stage for every single Heracles 2 rocket that I launch. Heracles 2? Heracles 60 VII point V. <laughs> yes. No, it's the upper stage for every single one of those that I've launched. And I have launched quite a few now. Every single Artemis has gone off on one of those. I suppose Artemis 1, we never actually got to that stage because the core stage, the two LR105 NA6s, was what caused that mission to fail. But since Artemis 1, well, we're now on Artemis 4, we haven't had an issue with this at all. Now, the landing here, I was really trying to hit that major craters and I just about got it. It was so tight. You can see the crater there just to the right and I must just be on the border between the Mare Fecundati... <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Mare Fecundi... <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not going to try saying that again. So yeah, that mare and the major craters, I must have only just been on the border because you can see as I was coming down that the biome switched and I was really happy with that because major craters is quite a hard biome to hit. 
So having just looked it up, the English translation for the mare that I was unable to pronounce just now is actually the sea of fertility. So I really should have just gone with that because that is, well, it's a lot easier to say than mare. I'm not going to say it again. I'm not going to say it again. But here we go. I have just hired another two astronauts. And this is about the point of the video where I went in and built Daedalus. And yeah, that was in the last build episode. So if you want to go check that out, go check that out. And here we have me finally dumping those funds so I can get up to 75 science and I believe it's up to 75 science for 1 million or it might have been 2 million I dropped I can't actually remember I think it might have been 1 million I can't remember I can't remember but if yeah once again if I'm wrong on that please do correct me so I can go and amend that because I want to be playing it as close to how you should be playing RP1 as possible and obviously that R&D has been fully upgraded due to Kerbal Constructs. I have since removed Kerbal Constructs but obviously it hasn't changed my R&D back down to the level it should have been so we're stuck with it for now. But now we're just waiting for once again another Artemis LLP launch. I did say there were going to be a lot in this episode. Well, it seems I was wrong about the Artemis LLP launch because we actually have our correction burn for Hermes 5 on the 24th of March 1961. And I was getting a little bit worried about this mission by this point because you can see that little red line that's pointing to Earth. Well, that's our connectivity. That's how strong a connection we have to Earth. And we're only about halfway to Venus, so... Yeah, it was at this point I was thinking, are we going to be able to actually talk to this satellite when we get to Venus? And it wouldn't be a problem because, like I've said before, we can use MechJeb to do our maneuvers for us. But the problem that we would run into is we would be unable to stage. So we'd have that lander on there, but we wouldn't actually be able to do anything with it. We'd be able to capture because there will be enough fuel in that Juno 6K stage to capture. But yeah, it's actually landing on Venus that might be harder. And now just a very quick stop at the Space Center indeed before we go on to the third launch of this episode. Yeah, the third launch on the 27th of March 1961. Artemis LLP-5. Hopefully this will be the fourth? Fourth lunar probe? Yep, yeah, I'm forgetting how many of these launches we've actually done because Obviously, well, there's been a lot of these now, and at least this one we are launching when it's still sunny so we can actually see the launch. Not that I'm going to show the entire launch because, well, we have seen, quite frankly, a lot of these. And once again, everything went off, well, rather well. Everything lit, everything ignited properly, and we managed to get ourselves an encounter with the moon, as you can see here. Once again, we are going to have to really pick our spot that we are going to go for. I think we're going to go for one of the other Maria because they're easy to land on they're very easy to land on they're rather flat and it's quite nice so yeah where are we gonna go this time is going to be the question and what am i gonna do once i've exhausted these contracts there is another contract that i do hope to pick up soon and that's actually a return probe so what we're gonna do is we're gonna land on the moon and we're gonna take some scientific data and then we're gonna actually fly back but there we go, what a lovely little shot of that pale blue dot as we come down. Oh, no, it's not a Marriott, it's the Oceanus Procolarum. So, yes, the Sea of Storms, the Ocean of Storms, I believe is the English translation for that. But here we are once again back in the Research and Development Building because once again, from landing on the moon, we got an awful lot of science. But now, the next thing on our calendar is going to be the launch of Daedalus 1, our return to crewed spaceflight. And that is very exciting because it's not just a return, we're also able to perform extravehicular activities, which is something very nice. There's a very, very tasty little contract that we can pick up for that, which gives us an awful lot of money. And I think I picked that up already, and that's what I use to actually upgrade my research and development building. But yeah, no, very exciting stuff because there is also more science to be gained from that. But before we launch our next crewed space flight, here we have our Venus approach. And you know what? We did actually have connection, which was absolutely wonderful. That means we can perform our capture burn at Venus and then we can stage our little spacecraft and we can finally reveal that little lander that we are going to attempt to land on the surface of another planet. That's a historic moment, an absolutely monumental moment to land on something so far away but here we are 
just performing our capture burn at Venus now. And if I'm going to be quite honest with all of the problems that this mission had, I was not very hopeful that we were going to be forming the landing because, well, the actual capture we got around Venus put our apparatus at a very, very, very high altitude and we've not got a lunar rated heat shield but there we have the little lander that has been tucked away in that fairing for so long i think it took around 180 odd days to get to venus with the transfer window that we went for quite a long time to get to venus if i'm going to be particularly honest but that's what mechjeb told me was the best transfer window that i had at that time so here we have our orbiter fully led out with those lovely solar panels having been deployed, that scansat being rather useless because we are not going to be able to use that with the heights that we are at around Venus. No, we need to be in a much lower orbit to fully utilize that scansat. But here we have the last moments of this thing's flight, unfortunately, because it did burn up in Venus's atmosphere. Well, that, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, is a real down note because we have picked up a lot of contracts to land on Venus and do atmospheric analysis of Venus. So, yeah, we are going to have to really ramp up our Venus landing game and the next Venus transfer window. We're going to have to design one that is going to be successful because otherwise we're going to run out of time on that contract and we will have to pay, well, quite a lot of money out because I think I picked up like three. But here we have our return to crewed spaceflight. It is Daedalus 1 on the 12th of June 1961 on an Icarus 1 launch vehicle. That launch vehicle that we have designed in a build episode and actually we designed Daedalus in a build episode as well. So yes, this is just a pure build episode rocket I guess you could say. Now, the purpose of this mission, which is currently being piloted by Jane Adams and Karen Richards, one of them is going to attempt the first ever EVA, the first ever extravehicular activity and there's a couple of reasons for this. We got a contract for it, which has already given us an advance of 1 million, so that was rather nice. But of course, if we complete it, we will get a bit more payment. And well, yeah, so money is good, but the other reason is we can get crew science by sending someone out to take an EVA report, which gets us another fair whack of science. So that's something else that we're gonna want to do. But there we go. We had that LR87 LH2 upper stage fire successfully. We sent that core back down to Earth. I don't know if that actually reached Earth. I have mentioned in a build episode that sometimes they don't quite go beneath the periaps that they need to actually delete them. So that's probably going to be something that I check in a future episode in the tracking station off camera because that can get really annoying because it just leaves loads of litter around. Litter that should really have burnt up in the atmosphere or gone away. But because of the way KSP works, it doesn't quite do that. But yeah, we managed to successfully get into orbit. Another thing about this mission is we're going to try and break several records we're going to try and break some altitude records and we are also going to try and break some duration records when i designed this in the build episode i did say that i wanted this rocket this spacecraft to be able to last 14 days in space and it can we have enough food we have enough water we have enough oxygen and electric charge and means of gaining electric charge to really stay up in space for that long but here we go karen richards the first person to do an extra vehicular activity, I guess you could say, the first ever EVA in our space agency. Just over Mexico, I think, California. I'm not particularly clued up on my US geography that well, but I'm fairly sure that kind of little sandbar that we can see, that we could see underneath, is part of Mexico, I think. But yeah, I thought, let's get her out. And that, that is something weird that happened, obviously. <laughs> her eyes were flashing she I, I don't know maybe she got a bit of glitter in her spacesuit and <laughs> the sun was reflecting on it in a funny way or something so yeah that was a bit odd but we we did it we did our eva that was successful now what we're going to do is we're going to go for that orbital flight with maneuvers and two plus crew contract so you can see we've got to get our apple apps quite high and a side effect of doing that is we are going to get some altitude records as well this is a very lucrative mission, a very lucrative mission indeed. I think we completed about six or seven contracts with this. 
and yeah it did really well now you may have seen that we were crossing the van allen radiation belts there and that was terrible for this mission we are running kerbalism and i think both jane jones and karen richards by the end of their time in space for this mission had gathered about 14 percent of their lifetime radiation which obviously is rather bad and i think that probably was because we were spending a lot of time in the van allen belts something that i would try to avoid in the future but i don't really know like how to do it i think maybe if we'd have launched in a polar slightly more polar inclination we could have avoided those but we came down successfully we entered earth's atmosphere we suffered the effects of re-entry and managed to pull through them now this is something that really scared me what happened there the parachute broke like 50 meters from the ground but luckily they still managed to survive now, with everyone giving Jane Adams and Karen Richards a good old pat on the back at ground control after their successful mission, we gained an awful lot of science from that mission because, like I said, crewed flight once again is giving us a lot. So, what I done there is actually I went in and I completed the seven days orbit, well, the remain in orbit for seven days contract because that flight did last seven days in orbit. There is a bit of a weird way where, because, well, basically, I finished the two days in orbit contract at the same time it kind of doesn't read that i was actually in orbit for seven days so i thought i was in orbit for seven days so you know what i'm gonna complete it anyway because that's one of those kind of contracts that i feel like you can go in if you're justified you can go into the old f12 screen and actually complete that for you another thing that i did whilst i was in the cheat menu is i took away two million funds from my piggy bank i guess you could say because i needed to get more than 75 science to unlock the apollo capsules so that's what I did. I cheated away all that money rather, rather sadly. But yeah, that was the end of 1961 part one. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and if you have, why not go and give it a like. If you have really enjoyed it and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do subscribe. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.